Folks, a lot of people are having hassle this week um, as the self-employed income support scheme system is being ruled out and everyone can start applying, I think, from today um, for their grants. So people have gone in quite easily to the eligibility checker on HMRC, um, put in their UTR, put in their national insurance number, uh, and HMRC are telling them if they're eligible or not, um, which is fine. And it also tells them on what day and from what time on the day you can make your application. So I know some people would have been told they can apply from today or tomorrow or you know, Monday at 8 a.m. All these kind of inform bits of information coming back. And our point on the eligibility um, checker is that it is not always accurate. So some clients are being told that they are eligible when we know that they're not eligible. Um, so for example, we have a few clients who based on the HMRC records that the eligibility checker is um, going to to check the verification, um, it would seem that they are eligible because they were self-employed in at least the 2018-19 tax year and their tax return is submitted to HMRC. So that being the case, and as long as at least 50% of their income is from self-employment on average over a three-year period, um, the eligibility criteria will tell you you're eligible. Um, however, like we've got clients who maybe have ceased trading since then, or they've incorporated their business since then and moved into a limited company, and they are no longer self-employed. But the eligibility criteria is saying you are eligible. Um, however, they, they shouldn't uh, make a claim, um, and we adv we're advising clients accordingly on that. So just take care with the eligibility criteria. If it also tells you you're not eligible, but for some reason you think you are, do come back to us. We did have one client who we thought would have been eligible, but actually we completely forgot that they have all their employment income, which is actually more than their self-employment on average over a three-year period. So it actually means they're not eligible, um, which is unfortunate because their business is now mothballed and they could be doing with some of the funds. So that's the first thing. The second thing is actually overcoming the, the problem on uh, making your claim. The main link on the government website, um, which I did a video about previously, takes you through a whole process of getting verified, first of all, to get a government gateway account. And that's where everybody that we're talking to is hitting the problem. The problem is that um, our clients here in Northern Ireland are trying to provide a Northern Ireland driving license, which is not acceptable on the system, an Irish passport, which they have, which is not acceptable on the system. And they're also going to the um, alternative methods. Um, and the alternative method is putting in details about your last loan, your last mobile phone contract, confirming your home address, these types of things that are being run through credit reference agencies. My experience with credit reference agencies in the past is that these records are also not fully accurate at times. So the information you're given is to the best of your knowledge, that's the right information, and you're all getting messages to say, I'm sorry, you, you know, we can't verify you, which is very, very frustrating. Now, what I have in my hand now, I've quickly printed out something, very unusual, so you should make a note I've printed something. Um, and this is a, a bit of guidance from Aidan Malone of Malone Accounting here in Northern Ireland, who's a colleague of mine's. Um, and Aidan says, look, this, this is a workaround that people can use to be able to get access to HMRC's systems and to make their claim. The principle of all of this is don't use the self-employed income support system links on gov.uk, which is what we were advising to do initially, but now we've had all these problems with ID verification. Um, what you need to do is actually set up your gateway account on another part of the system, first of all, and then make your claim. And there may be a field as well, which asks you what, uh, if you're an individual and so on, and if you can select the option for organization, it'll actually get you through the system as well and allow you to make the claim. Um, so what Aidan's given me is just a quick bit of guidance on, and I'll give you the links to the, the relevant pages now on the website as well, folks. Um, you can register for HMRC online services, first of all. Um, as you go through there, just continue to your account and you'll be facing then a page which asks you for your government gateway ID and your password. But then there's create sign-in details. So if you click through there to create the sign-in details, it'll ask you to enter your email address in the next screen. Then it'll say there's going to be a code sent to the email address. Put the code in once you get it through your emails. Once it's confirmed, you can click on continue. All right. Let's just see because I lost my page there. 
Uh, email address confirmed. Okay, so the next screen then is going to be put in your full name, create a password, set up some recovery uh, information for your sign-in details. So once you go through there, set up a recovery password, all very easy, and then you'll get this, your government gateway ID is. Um, so once you get that, make a record of that's your government gateway ID, and you'll have already made your password. Then you'll be able to go through to sign in. Now, it'll say what type of account do you want? So it says individual, um, or organization, or agent. And at this point, what Aiden's saying is, make sure you select organization instead of individual. And you'll be presented with a screen that you'll be able to sign out in the top right hand corner um, that you'll be able to get your government gateway set up. This will allow you to proceed uh, to the eligibility checker first of all to process your claim um, and you'll need to put on your UTR and your national insurance number um, and that takes you through there and then you're, you'll be signed into your account at that point in time. So that's a workaround folks I'm very grateful to Aidan for sending that through. I will attach this document um, as well so you've got that. Um, look get stuck in again and give it a go. Hopefully this time we'll all have better luck um, and I'll see you on the other side.